In samenwerking met het Explore Festival haalt Schietmacher de Zuid-Afrikaanse choreografe Robin Orlin naar Kerkrade met haar voorstelling met de langste titel uit het festival We Wear Our Wheels With Pride and Slap Your Streets With Color We Set Bonjour to Satan in 1820. Robin Orlin is met haar 67 jaar nog steeds een van de meest geëngageerde choreografen die we kennen. Zij is geboren en opgegroeid in Johannesburg. En ook voor deze voorstelling vertrekt ze vanuit een beeld uit haar jeugd en reflecteert ze op de complexe politieke situatie. Ze herinnert zich uit haar jeugd de zulu rixias die bestuurd werden door zwarte mannen. En die zwoegende mannen die waren tot in de puntjes gekleed. Die waren uitgedost met veren en met edelstenen. En zoals zij die de witte mensen door de straten zag rijden, daar zag zij eigenlijk al een dans in. En met acht jonge dansers wil ze nu niet alleen die uitbuiting centraal stellen, maar vooral ook de waardigheid van deze rixia bestuurders naar voren halen. Die acht jonge dansers die komen van Moving Into Dance. Dat is een van de eerste gemixte dansgezelschappen uit Zuid-Afrika. Robin Orlin woont inmiddels zelf grotendeels in Berlijn. Daar woont ze samen met een filmmaker. Maar ze choreografeert nog steeds voorstellingen die reflecteren op het bestaan en de politieke situaties in Afrika. Met name in Zuid-Afrika. Alle werk is politiek geladen. Maar het heeft ook altijd humor en ironie. Sommigen noemen het een, uh, een geladen pistool. Uh, die lading voel je ook echt in die voorstelling. Maar tegelijkertijd is het ook kleurrijk en feestelijk. En dat zal zeker bij deze voorstelling ook zijn. We spraken Robin Orlin over die voorstelling met die lange titel. We were our wheels with pride and slap your streets with color. We said bonjour to Satan in 1820. It's a piece about the rickshaws um, who were sadly used as slaves um, in, in, at the turn of the century, not this century, the last century, by the colonialists. And um, it's, um, it's pretty much um, um, a memory of them and also uh, homage to them, to the, um, to the rickshaws. Um, they really were slaves. And for me, their, their memory is very strong and um, it's important not to forget. So they were, um, so I've kind of created this homage. We, we tell the story about the, the, the rickshaws. We dance and tell the story about the rickshaws. And at the end, we pay homage to them and their ancestors. For me, they're unsung heroes from the apartheid era, from the colonial era. era. And I think it's important to acknowledge their, their presence and, um, and who they are. And who is that Satan in the title? And 1820, that refers to? That refers to the 1820 settlers. <laughs> So Satan are, are the settlers. And what has touched you so much in the stories of these rickshaws drivers eh, what, that you made a performance about it? Well, you know, the rickshaws, um, I always talk about the first, um, the, the first bits of dance that I saw when I was very young and which moved me. Um, and actually, I think, kept me in dance. Um, kept me working in dance and that and and the rickshaws are one group and the mines um, the mine dancers I mean none of this is very politically correct because they're very much icons of of apartheid but I think they need to be acknowledged and remembered um, the rickshaws for 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 one reason that they were the most beautiful dancers in the streets in the streets. And I remember as a child being on holiday with my parents when I was five, six years old, seeing these, these men flying, flying in the air, enormous, big men, and coming down with a real sound. And it, it was such a, 
it was such a, an impressive image. I, I, I thought they were angels. Um, and um, I think, I think it's, 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 it's something that I want to share. Um, I wanted to share with the dancers because the dancers, even though four of the dancers in the group are Zulu, because the rickshaws were predominant, were Zulu, and they came from KwaZulu-Natal. Um, they didn't know about them. And, you know, that for me is even more important to make the peace and to remember them and, and, and praise them and give them thanks for, for who they were and, 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 and what they stood for. They still exist in KwaZulu-Natal, but not, not in the same way. They, they, it's quite sad. They're quite broken. They're quite, um, bitter. You know, nothing's really moved for them, which is very sad. And did you have interviews? interviews with these uh, rickshaw uh, drivers or did you do research? We did a lot of research. Um, there isn't a lot of research, actually. There really isn't, which is even more of a reason to, to, to hold on to, to, to this, all this information. Um, um, there really isn't. There was a rickshaw kind of museum or a museum in, in Durban which spoke about the rickshaws and had an exhibition, but I don't think it's a permanent exhibition. Unfortunately, we didn't really speak to many of them because we were in Johannesburg when we were making the peace. We couldn't travel to Durban because we were making the peace during the lockdown. So uh, we had a, a lot of difficulties, but um, some of the kids spoke to their parents. Some of the dancers spoke to their parents um, about the rickshaws and particularly the Zulu uh, uh, clan. And um, we we took some of the, the stories that they told us and some of the uh, research that we did. And how did you make the costumes? They are new, I guess, but they are inspired by the dress. They're and very the new. They're very new. <laughs> I mean, there's there's no ways we could uh, recreate those costumes. Um, and I'm not sure I even wanted to. Um, and we kind of made a modern rickshaw. <laughs> um, the hats were made. Um, the costume designer, Birgit Neppel, she took um, um, bicycle hats, uh, you know, uh, things. And from that, we built um, the, the headdresses in our version. And um, we took very colorful cloths from Diagonal Street in, 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 in Johannesburg, and we used those. Um, which the rickshaws never really used. So it was really our impression of, of, of the rickshaws. And how did you transform the remembrance, the, uh, the memories you had as a child to these flying angels through the streets to a modern dance piece, to a choreography? I used a couple of devices. I work with film real time. So I have a lot of cameras on stage. And um, having these cameras on stage really create a certain kind of ambience, um, which the viewers will see when they see the piece. Um, I also, um, I mean, I, you know, I made this piece in the time of COVID. So we couldn't, what I really wanted to do was bring people up on stage. And we couldn't do that, which is something I do often in my work. So we had to get the people to join us. Um, um, through sound and rhythm um, um, to call the ancestors of the um, of the rickshaws and to, to work with, uh, to be part of, of the, the second half of the piece, which is like a very colorful, very beautiful ceremony um, that each dancer creates um, um, their relationship with their ancestors. Um, and the first half is just very colorful, just very, um, there, we work with a bar that we suspend from the ceiling and there's lots of swinging, which the rickshaws did and, and going up and down. And it's very beautiful. The images are really very beautiful. Um, and for me, it's very much my memory of the, of the rickshaws. Is the performance also about the inequality between the rickshaw drivers and the people who they are moving through 
Yeah, um, true. I think it, it comes through right at the very end. So I present them not as victims throughout the piece, but right at the end, I pay homage to them. And there's something that I say, talk about, um, about the fact that they've only lived, most of them only lived to the age of 35. Um, and I am- um, 35? I, yeah. And then they died. Yeah, they died or they just couldn't be, be rickshaws anymore. I'm, but I'm sure it was very strenuous work, very, very strenuous work. Um, and um, they weren't well treated. I mean, you know, the, the word rickshaw in Zulu means hashishi, which is a horse. A horse. So, a horse. so the Zulus called them horses. So which they is, used as horses. Human horses. Yeah. Yeah. And what does this piece say about the inequality in the society of today? It talks, I mean, right at the end, there's a small section about Uber, which is a modern version of a rickshaw. And it talks about how it's the same old structure, same old problems, same old abuse. Um You know, I try to find a place for it in today's um, uh, situation. So that's very actual because there's now also a lot of discussions about uh, Uber drivers. Yeah. Thanks, Robin. We are looking forward to this very colorful, colorful performance in Schiedmacher. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I hope everybody enjoys it. And 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 ha has a has a sense of history of uh, you know just a small sense of 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 the the um, the journey of apartheid. Nothing to celebrate. Definitely not anything to celebrate. <laughs>